Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, we were talking about the search and unemployment model and under this model we discussed about the one sided model and in one sided model we were talking about the supply side of the labor market. Now, when I talk about supply side of the labor market then we have to think about in what context the labor can be participating in the labor market. So, we had derived uh, some idea about some ideas about how we can measure the participation of labor in the labor force market. And if the labor is participating, then what are the factors that determine the uh, that that determine the participation of the labor force? One basic aspect that we always uh, uh, look at that what are the safety nets of the labor? So one we discuss about is that the government introduces the unemployment insurance benefit, and this unemployment insurance benefit provides an opportunity to the labor. Uh, uh, and it also gives an opportunity to the labor to bargain uh, with the firm so that uh, at least there will be some kind of threshold for the uh, uh, for the labor to ask for a better wage rate or better wage from the firm so we analyze these aspects we were talking about uh, the two sided part in two sided part we had introduced both one is the firm and one is the labor uh, and we uh, wanted to see that how when we are seeing from the demand side and supply side, so labor is also looking for work, firm is also posting the vacancies. So if you are seeing from both dimensions, then how the interaction between firm and the consumer or labor can play an important role in determining the overall in, uh, unemployment in the economy. So we will be getting back and deriving those macro indicators that we had mentioned so unemployment rate the participation rate the vacancy rate the beverage curve so all these concepts will again be coming back but at this moment let's uh, get back to what we were talking about and then we'll move to the uh, we'll move and finally we will conclude this particular topic uh, so we, we were, so the reference remains same the williamson and the sanjay kechug this uh, the macroeconomics book and the modern macroeconomics so these two references are the the sole and then we we were discussing about the two period and under that we had discussed that so let's get back to so here what we are saying that here we are having the the end consumers who are looking for jobs so not inside the house or not out of the labor market they are actually participating in the labor market and they are looking for opportunities. So, we are talking about end consumers. Then we are looking at the firms which are operating in the economy and they are looking for, uh, for individuals. So, they are posting regularly the vacancies and these vacancies are important for deriving the unemployment scenarios. So, if you have more vacancies uh, coming from the firms and if the individuals are having more opportunities. Then in the last class we had derived a term called labor market tightness, right? So how with respect to the uh, how it is the ratio of number of firms looking for the employment opportunities or number of firms posting vacancies and number of individuals looking for opportunities. So it is the ratio of that. Uh, we have also used for the reciprocal but labor market tightness basically decides about this. So if you have more of A's individuals are having more opportunities to look for so as a result you find that the unemployment reduces but here we are talking only about those firms which are posting the vacancies so these things we had derived already we had also derived about the n if n is the number of individuals looking for opportunity and q is the number of consumers who are looking for work then we are talking about n minus q not the n entire so, we are talking about only those individuals who have interest in working and they are looking for opportunity. The payoff that we had decided about the labor supply, so it shows this that you have the expected payoff searching for work. So, if you are 
if it is going up then it is of course bound to have the positive relationship so this we have shown but this is the labor supply uh, we are labor supply curve of the representative labor or the consumer that he or she is looking here we uh, it was interesting that we introduced for the first time the form in our model and in form we mentioned about that a form will be posting vacancies which means that this form is looking for a more uh, I, I would say uh, number of people to be hired so but one aspect that we touched upon in the last session also was the cost of posting vacancies that how this particular in, in the last class I had also mentioned about how the companies hire consultancy firms and the recruitment agencies to hire some amount of labor and A is we are denoting at A number of firms which are actively looking for individuals. So, this is how we are mentioning about then we introduce so we have already introduced the labor we introduce the form now we will be seeing how these two are interacting with each other so that we de, uh, that we delete with the matching function so here you have to note it down that a successful match in the model is between one worker and one form which means that an individual is looking for job and a form is looking for individuals so both are matching with each other m is equal to aggregate number of matches e is equal to matching efficiency and here we have the matching function so matching function that we are mentioning m is equal to e m q a so the, this is what we are mentioning about so e m e represents the efficiency so that we normally say if you are having the cobb douglas production function so the a parameter that we have or a constant that we use that we represent the the productivity in the same way E also represents the efficiency of Q and A. So, Q represents the number of individuals looking for job, A represents the number of firms looking for individuals. So, here it decides about and it has certain characteristics that I have already mentioned. So, it mentions about constant returns to scale, positive marginal products, diminishing marginal uh, products. So, these are all associated and I think these are the very common term so linearly specified you can say and even even if you have increment in the in 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 the function by one then it also leads to the matching increase by one so this is what so if one form is increasing one individual is increasing is it is also leading to increase by the same amount in m so this is what it mentions about so it can be uh, it can be interpreted in that way and that uh, if you have constant increase then we call it as the constant return to a scale so this is what we mentioned positive marginal product in the sense that further additions is having the the uh, the positive effect see so output also will increase right if i hiring one more person then the output is going to increase but it will also have the diminishing scenario but after some point of time you cannot go for infinite hiring because you have to look for productivity also so from the productive point of productivity point of view we are assuming that it is about the diminishing marginal products now we will be talking about now the supply side of the labor market which is that we are now going to optimize so we are now looking at the optimization by consumers that how consumers are optimizing now here you have to note it down that each consumer chooses between home production and searching for one. Home production in the sense that you are not going to look for job, you are sitting at home doing some uh, some work that you enjoy. So, maybe the leisure that we have discussed in one period model that will uh, come into play here. So, you can say that those activities which are not paying you any or which are not having immediate economic benefits. So, we are uh, mentioning about those. So, here and searching for work means that if you work for a certain number of hours with fixed duration then you are going to get some reward or the wage. So, we are not counting for non-wage activities, we are counting with those activities which are linked with the wage. So, if you work for certain number of hours you are supposed to get. Now, if the con consumer chooses to search for work then he or she finds a match with a form uh, and and uh, with certain probabilities that how much we have. So, if the consumer is looking for work then there are chances that he may be employed or there are chances that he may not be employed. So, we are mentioning about that. 
So, here we have the probability of matching uh, uh, which, which, which means that uh, a chance that a consumer skill set or the required skill by uh, of the firm matches with a particular consumer. So, here it is P C. Again we are mentioning M upon Q. So, M is nothing but E M Q A it is Q and here it is, it is E M. So, Q and Q gets cancelled here we have 1 A upon Q. So, E M 1 J. So, this is how we are going to talk about. So, here the E M 1 J in the last class in the last session also I mentioned about right. So, if the consumer searches for work he or she will receive the wage rate. If, if the consumer uh, searches and it is not matched then it will have then he or she will have to depend upon the unemployment insurance benefits which is B. So, which means that if the individual is, is able to match with the required skills of the firm, he gets employment, he gets the wage rate. If he is not able to match and if he is not uh, and if, if, if matching does not take place, then he has to satisfy with the unemployment insurance benefits. So, that is the underlying idea. So, this also we had covered. Then we mentioned about the consumer probability of being unemployed. If a consumer chooses to search for work is then so 1 minus PC is equal to 1 minus EM 1 J. So, for the consumer who is indifferent, so if the consumer is indifferent which means that if the consumer matches with the requirement of the form, if there is skill match between the form's requirement and the individual. So, we have PC which is M upon Q. If it is not matching then it is 1 minus PC. So, this we are mentioning about. So, 1 minus PC is equal to 1 minus EM 1 J for the consumer who is indifferent so now will be so here it is if he is if he is matched then it is pc multiplied by the wage rate plus if he is not matched then he is he has to satisfy with the unemployment insurance benefit what we are how we can mention it so here we can simply derive so if you go for writing it further just for the pc then ultimately what we have is b plus em 1j W minus B. So, this is how we get it here. So, E M upon Q that you can mention. So, here we have E M 1 J. This we can introduce it here and then finally, we can arrive at this figure. Now, here you have to notice the W minus B. What is W minus B? W minus B is the difference between how much the firm is offering the wage rate and how much is the unemployment insurance benefit. So, w minus, so wider is the gap between these two there are high chances that labor will be willing to supply his or her labor. But from form side we are not sure what will happen to the form side because form may not like to hire because the, when the wage rate is high the form may have to incur the extra cost. So, those things will be dealing later. One thing that I mentioned that J the labor market tightness it is the ratio of A upon Q number of actively looking forms and number of people who are searching for job. If A increases there are high chances that the labor market tightness is going to be higher. If A decreases the labor market uh, tightness is going to be lower. So, this is how we uh, interpret this. Now, once I mentioned about, so this is the, the supply side, so expected payoff that the labor is willing to supply this much, right. So, the, this is what we mentioned with the given the difference between uh, W minus B that the labor expects the matching function and the unemployment benefit and this is the labor force. So, if you are going to increase this, there will be increase in the labor force because more people will be interested because W minus B is going to be higher. So, this is what we are mentioning about demand side of the labor market. So, demand side of the labor market when when the firm enters in the market it bears the cost k to post a vacancy which means that as I told that firm is hiring a, a consultancy firm and this particular firm is looking for uh, uh, this, this particular firm helping the firms to recruit. So, which means that if firms are posting vacancies it goes to certain some consultancy firms, consultancy firms, uh, firms charge uh, uh, to the to the posting uh, forms and then form settles or pays uh, pays the amount. So there is a cost involved in in hiring. The probability that a form with a vacancy finds a worker to fill the job is PF is equal to EM QA upon A. So here we have PF. Here we have the uh, here we have the elasticity. So once I mentioned about EM, so which means that it is M upon A. Here if I solve 
So, you can see that this is just the reciprocal of this. So, J we have written A upon Q. What, what we are mentioning that here it is just the reciprocal of A upon Q. So, here it becomes E M Q upon A. A and A gets cancelled. So, here it is 1 which means that E M 1 upon J 1 that we are mentioning about. When matched a worker and firm produce Z. So, the payoff to the firm is profit Z minus W. So, this is what we are uh, mentioning that if the firm is producing Z amount of output right the, the, this is the output when firm is hiring a worker. So, if, if, if worker and a firm produces amount Z then the payoff of the profit will be what how much you are producing how much is your output produced by hiring the labor and how much you are paying to the labor. So, Z minus W represents that. Now, expected net payoff for a firm posting a vacancy is 0 in equilibrium how it, it is 0. So, firm will enter the labor market, it will post the vacancies until the expected net payoff doing so is 0. So, here it is PF Z minus W minus K is equal to 0. This, this is what we are mentioning that if when the firm is entering into the market. So, we assume that whatever the, the recruitment or likelihood of recruitment that the firm is having and how whatever is the profit that firm makes, it is equivalent to the cost. So, P f z minus w is equal to k and the, this is what the equilibrium mentions about. In equilibrium, k must be equal to expected payoff. So, this is what we have for the firm for posting the vacancy. So, here if I am writing P f, so this can be written as E m 1 upon j 1 and this side we can bring this k this side and then we have in denominator z minus w coming. So, if I am writing E m 1 upon j 1, so it is k upon z minus w. So, this is what we mentioned that in equilibrium whatever the firm is having profit. So, the cost of posting uh, vacancies relative to the the, uh, to the I would say I would say profit if it is lower then the firm is uh, going to uh, high, uh, post more vacancies otherwise not which means that if Z minus W is higher firm will not mind posting vacancy because even if K is increasing but the rate of increase in profit is much higher than K then firm does not bother about but if, if it is lower then the firm will not post vacancy which means that labor market tightness will have uh, some impact of this. So, this is what we are going to examine. This is what we see k upon z minus w, z minus w you can say here is the z1 as you see increase in k. So, if k increases you can see that the labor market tightness decreases and this leads to more un unemployment which means the less of posting of vacancies and once you have the less posting of vacancies the matching uh, uh, will be very difficult and this will further reduce the labor market tightness and as a result the outcome will be at macro level that your unemployment will increase. So, let us uh, get back to I think we had sufficient background about this in the last session. So, we will be now going forward. Now, the idea is that once I am mentioning about the expected net payoff which is here. Now, we have also derived the demand side of the labor market. Now, we are seeing that how we can bring to an equilibrium of firm or how we can drive the equilibrium uh, uh, between firm and the labor because both are participating. The objective of the labor is to maximize the wage rate. The objective of the firm is to maximize the profit. So, how much bargaining is possible between firm and the labor? This we try to understand with the alternative strategies that these two individuals have under the Nash, Nash bargaining problem. So, the Nash bargaining, uh, bargaining solution, uh, the idea behind this is that if you have two agents strike uh, if they strike a bargain then it depends upon uh, on what each person faces as an alternative if the two person cannot agree and on the relative bargaining. So, this is the underlying idea it depends upon the relative bargaining power of the two people how these two in, uh, individuals in our setup you can say these two agents 
one is the firm one is the labor how these two agents are are uh, bargaining with each other and at the end how much is the gain for both so let's first derive that what is the total surplus how much is from the firm side and how much is from the labor side let's work out with the labor first so here it is the labor so worker surplus is equal to nothing but w minus b so here it is, here it is uh, wage minus unemployment insurance benefit then here you have the firm surplus is equal to z minus w it, it, it is uh, so once i mention about the firm surplus so here as i mentioned that how much the labor helps produce the output and how much firm pays to the labor so that's the profit for the firm worker surplus is nothing but w minus b b is nothing but the unemployment insurance benefit we have already assumed and then we have the total surplus what is total surplus total surplus is nothing but z minus b is equal to w minus b plus z minus w so once we uh, go for so once i substitute for this then we have the we can cancel uh, w and w so finally we have z minus b so the, this is what we get now the total surplus that we have z minus b so this is what we mentioned that for the form the surplus is w minus b plus we have the surplus from the form so it is z minus w w w gets cancelled z minus b becomes the total surplus now let's talk about in total surplus what is the share of the labor and what is the share of the form so here mention about a which equal to worker share in total surplus so this is the bargaining power they have so if i go for the substitution so how much i have so if w minus b so this is the worker surplus is equal to a is the the share in the i would say so z minus b that i have mentioned here in total surplus so this is the total surplus we have so this is the labor share so you labor shares can be written as w minus b here is the worker surplus is equal to the a the fraction in total share uh, surplus so z minus b is this we can go for solving w so w is equal to what is it is a z plus 1 minus a so once i have this and then we can bring this b this side so we it becomes 1 minus a b which means that uh, a is linked with the profit or the i would say output produced by the firms and 1 minus a goes to the uh, the unemployment insurance benefit so both are counted here now once we have uh, these two equations so two equations determining q and j from supply side demand side and nash bargaining can be written so we can substitute for w in eight equation so the, this is what we have in four and seven so we can substitute here here also we can substitute here so this is what four so this is what we are trying to bring there if i substitute w here right so finally what we get we get em 1 upon j 1 is equal to k upon 1 minus a z minus b so this is what we have the total surplus so 1 minus a which was the the surplus attached with the b amount this is what we had and finally uh, we are getting that we arrive at this equilibrium what is uh, the k upon 1 minus a z minus b so z minus b total surplus as long as k is not increasing it will not uh, bother so much if k is increasing it will bother much to the form for posting a vacancy so this is the underlying idea we will also have the further understanding of this suppose we have this particular line and we can see that the the labor market tightness that we have decided we mentioned about labor market tightness is g the corresponding labor force participation is q this is what so we will have the comparative statics also that what happens if k increases what happens if b increases because now we have explicit understanding that b is also playing a role how much we have the the product produced which means that productivity will matter now so we'll also see that what will happen if there is a product increase and if we are going to see increase in k so that matters now now as we have already mentioned about these two things now we have to go back and derive the macroeconomic variables which all were the macroeconomic variables 
the very first variable was the unemployment rate unemployment rate is what this is what we mentioned about here it is nothing but q1 minus pc so once we have a q1 minus pc so here it becomes 1 minus em 1j so this is what we are derived so your unemployment rate is nothing but 1 minus how much you have the efficiency of matching so this is what it becomes vacancy rate a into 1 minus pf so this also becomes 1 minus em 1 upon j this is more related with the form so that's why it is the reciprocal uh, term is coming here and this is upon a upon q which means that the number of vacancies will matter a lot that how many firms are participating how many firms are posting and then the aggregate amount ag aggregate output in the economy will depend upon this that how much we have the m m is nothing but em 1j and here we have so m is nothing but q how many people are looking for uh, matching and how many uh, matching is taking place so here we have 1j the e is the efficiency and z is the output that the uh, the firm is producing by hiring the labor so this is the aggregate output this is the vacancy rate and this is the unemployment rate now we'll be working with the comparative statics so increase in the ui benefit b increase in productivity z decrease in matching efficiency e so this is how it works it means that once you have the increase in unemployment benefit so what we see is that we have the so here this is the first equilibrium that we have so this is what we have minus b1 k 1 upon a z minus b1 so this is the original equilibrium we see that once we have the unemployment insurance increasing then this leads to uh, leftward shift of the the labor supply curve and as a result you will find that the unemployment will increase because this is uh, it is decrease in the labor supply why because uh, once we have the unemployment benefit increasing more number of people will be asking for higher job higher wages and that will be difficult for the firm to meet so this is what we have increasing the wage rate as alternative to working becomes more attempting for searching consumers so this is what so as a result labor market tightness j falls for consumers are uh, searching for work becomes uh, more attractive and they will be like they will not be accepting which means that your unemployment will rise and vacancy will fall so this will have impact on your beverage curve so this is what we trying to understand we are trying to understand so second is the increase in productivity what happens if the firm is uh, hiring a labor and this labor helps produce a more output which means the increase in z so once i have the increase in z so this will help a lot so z minus b this is what we are mentioning about so if the total surplus is increasing then this will have the positive effect so this, this is what we have so this is one we see that we see that once we have the the output uh, so this is one this is the labor market tightness once you have the increase in productivity then firm does not mind uh, posting uh, more vacancies because now the cost for posting vacancy may also be lower so this will result in increase in labor market tightness which further uh, further uh, helps in increasing the participation of the labor force increasing the employment scenario so this is how we mention about so this is uh, what it helps to understand so once we have the increase in total so q rises unemployment falls vacancy rises and as a result the output rises so this is the last line is the macroeconomic figure that we try to understand here decrease in matching efficiency if firms are not able to uh, get the uh, get, get the required amount of labor or required uh, the or the worker with the required skill set what is going to be the impact on this the impact is going to be how the firms are posting uh, how the firms are posting vacancies so firm may be posting vacancies there is no doubt but the cost uh, but the um, if, if the matching is not taking place so for the people for the consumer it will be very difficult to uh, get hired by the firms and that will further create scenario so in that situation it will be really difficult to uh, to get employment because the the maybe the required skill sets are not uh, uh, are, are not with the consumer and firms are asking for more uh, more skill set so that we have a structural disequilibrium that we say in the economy that may apply here so as a result the unemployment rises 
but vacancy rate stays the same because firms does, and they do not mind and why fall. So, this is what the underlying idea. Let me summarize now. So, as a summary, I would say that the we discussed about the beverage curve, we mentioned about the one sided model, two sided model, but the underlying idea is that with such a small or, or I would say a small foundations of micro labor and consumer, we are able to drive the macro picture of unemployment and we are seeing that how in the real life uh, the labor such matters and how it impacts the, the participation of the labor in the market. So, I will stop here and then uh, we will have further discussion on the different schools of thought and the rational expectation we will be talking and I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you so much for your attention.